So I just start with how proud I am of this group. They, they fought, they scrapped, they clawed, they've gotten better every day. They, they committed to this process, and, and you saw even throughout the course of the day, they just got better as the, the day went on. And that was, that was probably one of our best quarters of, of the year in the fourth quarter. And then again, that's against a seller Maryland team that, that deserves everything that they get. So um, I, I'm so proud to be associated with this group. Uh, you know, I know the brand of Cornell Cross that, that they play uh, makes you know the long tradition of Cornell Cross very, very um, uh, you know everybody is supportive of that, and, and you know it, it honors all that's come before us. Uh, there's a certain way about playing at a place like Cornell, and there's a certain uh, expectation of how you play the game, and these guys honor that well. And so, um, again, think of our way today. Um, but proud of the way they continue to fight, proud of the belief, the, this resiliency that they continue to show, and, and know that uh, you know the clock ran out on us today, but uh, I hope we're on the, uh, the cusp of building something pretty special here um, moving forward. Questions for the student athletes, please. Over here in the front row. Kevin Brown, he's out across campus. <clears throat> Coach mentioned it, you're one of your best quarters in the, the season. Just how far are you holding around to their was scoring off of the season and just finishing strong to get ourselves a chance. Yeah, just really proud of our guys. You know, we, we fought and that, that's our identity. And, you know, win or lose, no matter the result, probably would have cried the same way in the locker room, just knowing that our time's done regardless. And that's really what hurt the most, you know, not, not really the result, just seeing guys who are going out the door. I mean, I'm lucky enough to come back, but definitely proud of our effort today, offensively and offensively. Any other questions for student athletes from the people here in person? Front row. Mm -hmm. You guys watched Marin receive the trophy. I saw you were looking at that. You know, being on this stage, how did that increase the hunger to come back? You know, you're both coming back next year. Do you, does that give you confidence in next year? Absolutely. It's everything. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we know what it takes to get here, and seeing that moment, I guess, pushes us even more, in, especially in the off season. And, um, we're just super lucky to be in this position that we are. We're Gavin has a year left, and uh, I have three, so I'm just could be grateful uh, for the position that we are. And we're just super excited to, I guess, get uh, get back to work. Yeah, huge step forward for the program. You know, it's a domino effect now that I've been here, he's been here. That's three years. Generation of players can pass on, do what it takes, and show the young guys this is who we are. In the back. I mean, I, I can't really speak to the beginning of the game, but towards the end of the game, I knew we, we were just hanging on, and we, we knew this was our last time regardless. No matter what the score was, we just we had to leave it all out there. I think they were, you really saw that come out of us in the fourth quarter. We just ran out of time. Yeah, at the end of third, you come to the sideline, you got everyone giving you a hug, saying, we got this, keep your head up, and that just pushed us. And um, for all the work that we put in this year, it was 15 minutes left, and especially for the seniors, 15 minutes of their career, and we gave it all we got. From Rogan, just piggybacking on that, CJ is in that final frame. Do you feel yourselves pick up another year, it seems like you're on the dash to finish that there? Yeah, definitely. Um, all year, uh, we may not have had the best start, but we always finished strong, and we gave it all we got. And uh, that last 15 minutes, we were definitely really motivated. And, um, unfortunately, we came up short, but um, yeah, those 15 minutes, we uh, pushed ourselves, and yeah. How about on Zoom, a question for the Cornell student uh, athletes from David Melanandro from uh, Philly Sports Blitz. Question for the student athletes. What was said at the end of the third quarter that let you guys go on that run to make the game interesting in the fourth quarter? Uh, no, no, nothing really was said. We just knew that like, this is who we are. And it was our last time together. It wasn't a pump up speech or a motivational quote. We just looked each other in the eyes and knew that we were going to call, call back in this thing. Maybe any additional questions for student athletes? Oh, in the back. For both of you guys, what does it say about this team that you're down nine to two, but you do come back like that? You do fight and show that resiliency, especially in that adversity on this stage. That's just our culture. Um, ever since we stepped, uh, all the everyone on our team stepped foot on campus, and you're going to give it everything you got. 
no matter if it's going to a lift or running conditioning. And um, yeah, every every time we're out on the field, we don't take it for granted. And um, yeah, uh, we gave it all we got. Yeah, just not really looking at the scoreboard. Just that next play mentality, game to one mentality, and the rest would take care of itself. We just came up short. Anything else, Mr. Athletes? Hey, gentlemen, thank you for your time today. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll take uh, questions now here in person for Coach Music. Right here in the second yeah, uh, Coach, first of all, I just want to say congratulations and a sensation to see someone in a nice run for the Virginia Finals. Coach, uh, you fall uh, behind 72 by the half. It, it seems like there was a little problem uh, trying to recuperate and also you created a run in the last quarter. My question to you is that uh, you play John Kitali, the top attacker, the top scorer for the team, was missing in action today. I guess most people was looking for a friend too. Was there anything wrong with him? Was there like, anything that you could share with us? Or, or you think in a way that was there anything he would have been better? He would have made a difference in the, in the outcome of this game? Yeah, uh, again, I, I think it's, it's the beauty of our offense is, is that, uh, you know, that everybody's involved. Everybody gets a, you know, a, a great take at it, and, and we see what's working, and we work from there. Uh, that defense, you know, we tip our caps to that, obviously holding us to, to two goals through. Uh, through the half and three into the third quarter was our lowest output of the year, and, and so they certainly did some things that, that challenged us. But uh, you know, once we started sharing the ball and, and playing team offense, you know, you saw the spark in the fourth, and, and John got going, and obviously CJ got us going early, and so uh, you know, Peter got in the action, uh, spent some work on it. So uh, again, I think there was you know, for, for the seven goals we scored, they were pretty well distributed. It's a great defense, you know, that there's not a whole lot to take advantage of, uh, and so we had to certainly just make plays, and, and a few guys settled in. Uh, again, today wasn't uh, you know John's most impressive performance maybe uh, on the stat sheet, but he did a lot for us. He continues to command a lot of respect. He, he manages situations as well as any, and so uh, for us, he, he's a guy that we lean on, and then he's the one that helps us spark that run. Obviously, uh, scores one at the end that gets allowed, disallowed, and then scores another one. So uh, you know, a guy that that, that we trust inherently uh, to to do everything that we need done, and, and so. Uh, even though his output maybe in the score sheet didn't look like it. Uh, so proud of the way John led us today and, and did a lot of great things. Front row, the opponent, the green shirt, blue shirt. Do you get a large amount of satisfaction out of the fact that you outshot them, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best teams in the country, and you held them under 10 goals, and you kind of made them sweat at the end of what led below Sure. You know, I think in, in this sport, right, there, there's no moral victories. You don't walk away feeling good because you, you made it tough on them. We believe coming into this thing, we're going to win. We truly believe that top to bottom. That's a heck of a team. They do a lot of things great on tape, but um, we thought we had the, the, the ability to, to beat that team. Uh, you know, with that being said, they were awesome. They, they, they managed their, our offense really well. Our defense played it as well as they possibly could. The game plan was outstanding. I thought we competed at the face-off backs. We made a team that doesn't make mistakes make mistakes, and, and that made us, you know, uh, that was part of what we were hoping to do is press them to those limits, get those in uncomfortable situations that we can start to capitalize on. Uh, and, and again, I, I think the the thing we talk about a lot in our program is about the inputs, not the outputs. It's about you know how you show up and the things that you can control. And I thought our guys did that. You know, from the start of the game being down five goals, six goals in the game, and never losing faith, and I think you saw that. And so, uh, you know, the, the thing that I am most proud about of this group is not that they made barrel and sweat for a little bit there, but they just never lost the belief, the focus, uh, the enthusiasm, the effort, uh, and you saw it over the course of that game. And the fact that that team played two games in three days and four up and through, over the course of the game uh, brings a smile to my face, and, and I know many of our other girls Coach, one of the things that seemed to spark you guys in the fourth quarter was a ride that looked a lot more aggressive. You were really pressing forward. I'm sure some of that is a need to just find some more possessions with the time running down. Would you have considered maybe going to a more aggressive ride earlier to try and create a spark that way as you guys leave the run? Uh, you know, certainly in hindsight, it was like uh, there was some potential for that. Um, I think going into the game, you're hard pressed to, to be super aggressive in the ride because they're, they're so good at getting the ball up and out. You're trying to manage transition as much as you are trying to ride. Uh, and sometimes you get lost in the middle there and 
and start giving away some easy ones. And so uh, certainly that was a team we were hoping to not give them any of those opportunities to make them work for everything. And, and truly all nine goals, I felt like we made them firm. And so uh, obviously, you know, we, we had some success and we had to get a little aggressive there. Maybe that'll work for longer, but you know, that's a scary team in transition with a lot of guys that handle the ball really well. And so uh, you want to try to manage the, the, that flow as well as you can. And I thought we did a pretty good job with that. We'll uh, take a question from Zoom. David Melander Jr. from Philly Sports Blitz. What, was, what did you tell your players in the locker room following the game, and what is, what is the one thing you can take away from this season going into next year? Following the game, you know, they're, they, they just talked about how proud we are of, of the way this group has come along. It's, it's been a long two years. There's been heartache and, and you know, adversity, and then there's been, you know, the most incredible moments with this team to, to share that field today and play Memorial Day Monday. And, and so for us, you know, I'm just proud of the progress this group's made. Um, it would have been easy to um, complain and cry in our soup when, when things didn't break our way and, and when, you know, we were in tough spots and guys were deciding whether or not to withdraw from school last year. And, and coming back this year, there was a lot of reasons that we weren't going to be, you know, as good as we could be, right? We could have come back and talked about all the reasons that we're inexperienced and uh, we lost a great group of players in, in that senior class that graduated over those two years, and they didn't. They never once looked for an excuse, they just looked for the solution. They looked for the next opportunity to make a play. They looked for the next way to get better. And so that group took who was in that locker room and every one of those guys committed to the plan of just getting better every day. And again, that's what makes me most proud of, of our effort today and throughout the course of the year. I thought Saturday up to Saturday was our best performance of the year. Today, obviously, you know, there's parts that Maryland makes it really tough when you by the fourth quarter, that was the best across we played all year. If you're peaking at the right time, that means your guys are committed to improving at everything. And, and so uh, just walking away from today, when I told them, uh, it is that I'm proud. I'm proud of what they did. I'm proud of how hard they fought. I'm proud of the leadership within that group. Uh, and then in terms of moving forward, it's, it's we built a foundation. We built a foundation. Cornell Lacrosse uh, it is, you know, we stand on the shoulders of giants at a place like that, and truly, I think we're back to where we need to be in terms of culturally. We heard our guys talking about it and brought us on my face, just hearing them echo the sentiments that, that we think are important to our program. To hear them talk about the resiliency, and regardless of the scoreboard, regardless of the situation, you show up and you compete, and you care for your teammates, and, and you saw that today, I think they put it on display. And so, um, we talked about over the last two years being a renaissance an opportunity to rebuild, to, to really get back to the basics, philosophically talk about who we want to be, and then when it's time that the rubber hits the pavement, it's time to go, and, and they did just that. And so uh, I think they truly set the foundation for this program moving forward, uh, and there's a lot of young guys in that locker room. For how great our senior class was and, and some of the studs that we're going to lose, there's a lot of really young guys in that locker room that are just getting started, uh, and so I'm excited for what, what the senior class built and the belief that they built within our locker room, and now uh, it, it's entrusted to us to, to keep building on where we were today. Time uh, for two more questions. A part of that foundation to rebuild, do you feel like this was a, kind of ahead of schedule, uh, not that the season's over and you can reflect on things? Yeah, to be honest, I didn't. Uh, if you would ask me on February 1, are you going to play Memorial Day? I don't think I could confidently say yes. You know, then, but also we had played over more than 15 years, and, and so um, again, I, I think that's the beauty of this thing. Where you know, I don't think at any point in time I could have told you how good we were, or how bad we were. I, I would just said we're getting better, and we saw that in this group. They had that mentality. They had that laser focus. That even when we were 10 and one, no one was content. No one was just okay with being good. Everybody wants to be great, and I think that's truly a marker of success within our program. Uh, because when you have guys like that, right, nothing is too small to care about. Nothing is too small to, to try to win. And, and uh, that nature brings you to opportunities like that. One more question for Coach in the front row. And this will be the final one for Coach. And in the post game handshake line, Coach Tillman really made a point of telling you how he approached the situation with the group in the past. Um, you know, as a first year coach, how do you move forward? And does making the same competitive at the end of that help you when you're thinking about building for the future? Yeah, you know, Coach Sills is, is great with us. You know, we've swung myself in Jordan. He's always there and, and you know, pass on advice. And obviously, he's uh, you know, at the very top of this team and more of the ways to become uh, a 
fixture on his calendar. So uh, he, he's great. Uh, I appreciate all of his advice, and, and certainly for us, you know, coming through today, I, I think uh, again, it, it, sometimes the stage can be too big when, when you're a little too young. It can be overwhelming with you know the, the TVs and the cameras and the interviews and all of it that comes along with Memorial Day. But I'm proud of this group that it, it never feel that way. There was a laser focus about it, and again, it's no different than how we've gone about everything this year. But I've been really proud of, of the maturity of this group and, and specifically uh, and, and the young guys. And so I think this is a, a jumping off point. You know, certainly, uh, you know, when we talk about things, we don't talk about things in terms of goals and trophies and, and you know, end points. We just want to get better tomorrow. So we talk about Memorial Day starting tomorrow. We just wasted 364 days. And so our hope is as soon as we turn the page from this and, and we let this hurt a little bit, that uh, it's back to work. You know, and, and the, the beauty of this is in the journey. We want to hold trophies, but I hope that's not the, the pinnacle of this, is, is that's where we get to and then what. That's a part of this journey, and, and I'm lucky to be going on through it with my staff and, and, and the guys on our team. Coach, congratulations. Great season. We appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Thank you.